once upon a time, not so long ago, there was a little girl and her name was Emily. And she had a shop. There it is. It was rather an unusual shop because it didn't sell anything. You see, everything in that shop window was a thing that somebody had once lost and Emily had found and brought home to Bagpuss. Emily's cat, Bagpuss. The most important, the most beautiful, the most magical, saggy old cloth cat in the whole wide world. Well now, one day Emily found a thing. And she brought it back to the shop and put it down in front of Bagpuss, who was in the shop window, fast asleep as usual. But then Emily said some magic words. Bagpuss, dear Bagpuss, old fat furry catpuss, wake up and look at this thing that I bring. Wake up, be bright, be golden and light. Bagpuss, oh hear what I sing. Bagpuss was wide awake. And when Bagpuss wakes up, all his friends wake up too. The mice on the mouse organ woke up and stretched. <coughs> Madeleine, the rag doll. Gabriel, the toad. Oh, look, look. Oh, and last of all, Professor Yaffle, who is a very distinguished old woodpecker. He climbed down off his bookend and went to see what it was that Emily had brought. Yep, 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 yep. Well, um, that's a heap of bits and pieces of metal. Painted or enameled by the look of them. I haven't the slightest idea of what they are. Bagpuss, what do you think they are? Oh, oh, well, I really don't know. I think one of them looks a bit like a bird. Yes. And the other one? I think it's a cat. <laughs> all that is all very well, but it doesn't tell us anything more about what these things are. I think they are all that is left of the crown and jewels of a frog princess. A frog princess? Ridiculous, there's no such thing. There are in fairy stories. Yes, fairy stories. Yes, tell us a princess fairy story. Yes, please, tell us, please. All right, all right. I'll tell you a story. In fact, I will sing you a story if Gabriel will please play for me and Bagpuss will please think for me. Oh, all right. What shall I think of? Think of a beautiful water princess wearing a tiny silver crown. 
Oh, yes. Yes, all right. With pleasure. There, a water princess. Thank you. I'll tell you of a princess, a lovely sad princess who lived in the depths of a cool mountain pool. Her crown it shone bright as the frost in the moonlight. Her heart it was sad as she sat on her stool. For all she ever saw there were lords by the score there, so proud and so perfect that each one a fool. They said you must choose me, it's useless to refuse me, you know you must marry cause that is the rule. There you see, that was the rule. A water princess had to marry somebody, but the trouble was she didn't like any of those proud stupid water lords. She just couldn't bring herself to choose one of them. But suddenly, she had an idea. Then the princess replied that at last she decided. She smiled very sweetly and gave a deep sigh. Then she cried, I will marry the one who will carry my small silver crown to me back from the sky. Then upward she sped, took the crown from her pretty head and threw it as high as she could in the sky. Hey, what? That's not the end of the story. What happened next? You can't just stop in the middle of the story like that. What did the water lords do next? Oh, they're still looking for the crown, I expect. You can see them sometimes. Oh, the water lords took magic and they flew up in the skies. Their floats were turned to wings and they flew in on their sides. Here they fluttered, here they scattered, here they hovered, hot and bothered. And you and I would call them dragonflies. If you sit beside a pool and a summer evening school, See their shining bodies gleam as they flit above the stream. They would cause you no surprise, we would call them dragonflies. Yes, you and I would call them dragonflies. Nip, 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 nip. Nonsense, rubbish. Dragonflies are just dragonflies. They aren't water princes searching for anything. They're just sort of large flies. I know, I know. It's only a story. Not a word of it is true. It's a watery fairy tale. Yes, I dare say. But whatever sort of story it is, you haven't finished it yet. I mean, what happened to the crown? Oh, I don't know. I expect it fell back into the water and she collected it later. No, she didn't. Eh? Didn't she? No. I'll tell you what happened. That was a watery fairy tale, so this is a frog fairy tale. Now then, I'll tell you. Bagpuss? Uh, eh? Oh? On that pond there was a lily pad, and on that lily pad there was a frog. A frog, you know, a bit like me, only greener. A frog on a lily pad? Oh, uh, 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 all right, if you insist. That's right, well... This frog, he looked up and he saw the crown flying past. He thought it was a fly, so he shoots out his long tongue and catches it. Glop. Just like that. <laughs> Luckily, he didn't swallow it. He didn't fancy the taste of it, and he spat it out. Now, he, he saw what it was, and being a frog and sensible, he dived into the water with it. He knew the princess would be pleased to have her crown back and would give him a reward. So he took the crown back to the princess and gave it to her. But for some reason, she didn't seem all that pleased to get it. She looked sad and she said, 
so you have brought me back my crown. And the frog said, uh, Yes, I have. I thought you'd like it back. The princess looked even sadder. And now I suppose you'll claim your reward. Oh, well, I wouldn't put it quite like that, said the frog, but uh, yes, well, you know, a trifle for me trouble would be welcome. The princess heaved a heavy sigh. Ah, me, it is my fault for being so proud. But what must be, must be. Frog, I will marry you. You will do no such thing, said the frog. But I must, said the princess. I said I would marry whoever brought back my crown. And you brought it back, so it is you I must marry. But I'm a frog. I don't want to marry a princess. I just thought you'd like your crown back, and uh, you might give me a reward or something. I fancied one of your crystallised starberries or a glacé lugworm. I'm sorry, said the princess. I must keep my promise. But don't worry. I do not have to marry you as you are. This is a fairy tale, and I have but to place a tender magic kiss upon your ugly brow, and you will turn into a handsome prince. Oh, no, you don't, said the frog, keeping well out of reach. I'm frog, and I want to stay frog. I'm not turning into any handsome prince, thank you very much. The princess sighed again. Oh, frog, how sensible you are. You've no idea how boring it is being a beautiful princess surrounded by all those proud, stupid lords. I often wish I could be something ordinary, like a frog. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place, said the frog. He hopped forward and placed a tender magic kiss upon the princess's brow. At once, in a flash of watery magic, the princess became a frog. A green, knobbly, squishy frog, just like him. They were married and lived happily ever after. There, that's how all the best fairy tales end. Frog fairy tales are no different from any others. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, it is a bit different, I should say. Frogs, indeed. <laughs> what happened to the princess's crown and her jewels and things? Well, you know what happened. They turned into the crown and jewels of a frog princess. Only, of course, she wasn't a princess anymore, so she just swam away and left them. There they are. Of course. Jewels for a frog princess. Of course. Jewels for a frog princess. And so the mice pulled it to the front of the window and left it there. So that if a frog princess, or whoever it really belonged to, should happen to come past, they would see it and come into the shop and collect it. And so their work was done. <coughs> Bagpuss gave a big yawn and settled down to sleep. And of course, when Bagpuss goes to sleep, all his friends go to sleep too. The mice were ornaments on the mouse organ. Gabriel and Madeleine were just dolls. And Professor Yaffle was a carved wooden bookend in the shape of a woodpecker. Even Bagpuss himself, once he was asleep, was just an old, saggy cloth cat. Baggy and a bit loose at the seams. But Emily loved him.